Welcome back. Today we have more custom miniatures. I'm gonna show you how to create the rune golem of doom. So this project began by me messing about with a few scrap bits of XPS foam. Using some steel wire I was able to see if my pieces are any good for creating a golem. This was actually a very efficient method when I used a needle to pre-poke holes for the wire to slide in. After a while I managed to create the legs of this little guy. Next I used hot glue to quickly attach the pieces. This is low temperature glue so it won't melt the foam or my fingers. I figured I don't need the steel wire when using hot glue. I continued by making the arms. For the left arm I had a ridiculous idea. A weird crystal blaster thing. I cut a long crystal looking foam bit and played with it until it looked okay. Looks quite funny, but it is deadly. For the left arm I carved a hand from foam. Before adding more stuff I shaped the torso and limbs of the golem so they look less awkward. Still looks a bit awkward. I was careful not to make the head look super derpy. I found a nice block that I shaped a bit further. Without thinking about it I managed to create places for eyes and mouth. That's it, it's done. The most terrible creature in the book stands before you. What do you do? The back was still a bit empty. I came up with something. A large crystal on the back. Uh, nope, not gonna make it a turtle today. I cut the piece flat, liked it and glued it on. Next up we have the runes. Well, not quite runes. I just carved out whatever I could come up with. The idea is to create these inscriptions over the entire golem. The easiest ones are made just by carving straight lines. Curves are a bit trickier. You can also try to use a low temperature soldering tool for this. It might work. Alright, after a while it looked something like this. The inscriptions almost hide the joints, which is great, but we're gonna do it better with sand. I applied plenty of PVA glue into all joints I wanted to cover up. Then I applied sand. Simple as that. I also glued a bit of sand on a few other places. Next I went to my father's workshop to drill out hardboard bases. That should do. Yes, I covered the base with glue and the same sand I used before. Then attached the golem. I also based another, even cuter golem that I let Fay paint. Once I got them in place I made a few stone slabs with similar carvings on them. These are glued onto the bases. 
I used plenty of glue so that I could partially cover the sides of the bits with sand. Here I almost forgot to make the eyes. I just cut out two small triangles. Easy. I painted everything with black. I watered the paint down a bit and also used a smaller brush to paint into the carvings. Next I overbrushed the base and the lower half of the golem with brown. The idea is to create a simple blend from brown to grey. I brushed the grey on the top half and smoothed out the transition. Next I applied slightly watered down green over the base. Then also on the lower parts of the legs and at the joints where I had applied sand. So far it looks good. Meanwhile, Faye started painting hers. I used a tan to gently dry brush the entire golem and the base. When lightly brushing with little paint, the brush will mostly hit highlights. That's why painting terrain and minis like this is so easy. If you have the right amount of paint on your brush, the shapes of the craft will do most of the work. I continued by painting the crystal thingy with white. I did that in order to get a bright paint job with my blue and purple. I did my best to blend these three colors into a nice transition. My first attempt for today was not that smooth, but however this is easier than it looks. I painted each side in a different way so that the transitions are opposite to each other. Even if the transitions aren't that clean, this will look quite good after an edge highlight. First I highlighted the edges with the brighter blue I've used. This won't do much, but when we come in with white, everything changes. The edges are best when highlighted strongly, and a light dry brush will also look good while it conceals previous mistakes. Here I applied some strong tone wash to make this engraving darker. Next I tried to use the same colors to paint some of the engravings into something that might look like it's glowing. Mm, nah. I gave up on the inscriptions for a while, and attempted to create an object source light effect for the large crystal. First I airbrushed with purple from the direction of the crystal. Might work, I thought, and continued by airbrushing the purple around the blue inscriptions as well. In the middle of the blue eye sockets I applied some white. If done well, this can contribute to a glowing effect. Well, after messing about for a while, I put the bright blue into the airbrush and did my best to create the light effect. By the way, you can make this with just a normal brush, kind of like this. Next I dry brushed with white to finish the effect. To get even more contrast, I took a smaller brush and highlighted the edges. The edges that are directly hit by the light can be completely white. While at it, I also highlighted edges on top of the model because someone told me it looks good. Indeed, I also highlighted some parts that I wanted to be more visible even if they are dark. 
The crystal was also missing a few edges, so I fixed that. Quick word about the dangly flails. Some of my upcoming creations are gonna be brought to life by custom miniatures sent to me by the Eldritch Foundry. These are really cool, you can create any character you need. I've got some Vikings coming in. For now you can get your own at 15% off through the link in the descriptions. Okay, I continued by applying a flesh tone wash on all of the sandy joint areas. And also a bit on the stone surfaces of the lower body. It was supposed to be brown after all. I then further darkened some joints and crevices with strong tone wash. That's what I do when painting minis as well. I just focus on putting a lot of washes in the joints. Next I did a test to determine if an autumn grass theme would fit for the base. Yes, that should work. The base shall get wilted grass and tufts. First I cut out a bit of hemp rope for my flocking. Good, I applied some glue on a few spots while I wondered how this base got so dark. All of the brightness I added to the golem must have made the base appear too dark. We'll fix that after a few tufts. I used the same hemp rope to create three grass tufts. To give more color to the ground and tufts, I used oil washes. First, brown oil paint thinned with white spirit. I applied this on the ground, tufts and grass. The grass became almost orange, which is good. I also applied more of this stronger brown around the joints. Here I realized I don't need more washes. I just painted the edge of the base black. Here is the golem I made for Faye. I built it quite quickly, so it looks weird, but in a good way, of course. Ancient magic lies heavy where the rune golem lurks. Patiently, it awaits hidden until greedy adventurers like you show up to despoil the tombs of its creator. Yes, many treasures lie ahead, at least according to the legends, but the price of such wealth is terrible, for a curse is set on the tombs you seek. Good luck. Thank you for watching Bard's Craft. Remember, don't just look at these videos, also do something yourself. Go out, go make some terrain, anything beautiful, and then you can come and watch another video. Go ahead, like and subscribe, and if you really appreciate the videos, you can support the channel through Patreon or by buying some of my artwork. Links in the descriptions. Goodbye.